The following presentation demonstrates the application of the hidden incision endoscopic surgery or HIDES technique for use in extravesical robotic ureteral reimplantation. Previously described for robotic pyeloplasty, in this video we report the successful adaptation of the hidden incisions in endoscopic surgery or HIDES port placement technique for robotic ureteral reimplantation. Hyde's port placement is designed to minimize visible postoperative scarring. In comparison with single port laparoscopic access, which itself may lead to issues with instrument clashing and triangulation, the Hyde's multiport approach replicates the ergonomics of a standard robotic surgery. A traditional multiport setup involves placement of an 8.5 mm camera port in the umbilicus. Bilateral robotic ports are then placed laterally to allow triangulation within the pelvis. Note that in the traditional approach, the ports are sited in visible areas on the abdomen. The Hyde's technique involves similar placement of a single 8.5 mm umbilical camera port along with bilateral 8 mm robotic working ports, which are now situated on the inferior abdomen along the line of fan and steel. After low fan and steel port placement, the 8mm working ports can be easily translated superiorly due to the relative laxity of the pediatric abdominal wall. Hyde's port placement is also feasible in infants as they have sufficient abdominal laxity to superiorly translate the lateral ports after placement sufficiently such that lack of working space is not a limitation. Here, initial varus needle placement is shown with the anterior superior iliac spines marked. Umbilical camera port placement is then performed. The 8 mm robotic working ports are then placed at the lateral aspect of the line of fan and steel, superomedial to the ASIS. The ports are tunneled at an angle as they are passed through the abdominal fascial layers, allowing the trocars to then be rotated superiorly into the final working position. Hyde's port placement still allows for excellent visualization of laparoscopic instrument introduction in the low anterior plane. The abdomen is insufflated via the umbilical port while the robotic trocars are inserted. As always, care is taken to identify the inferior epigastric arteries at the time of port placement. Here final port placement is shown. Generous spacing is preserved between working and camera ports, and also between the lateral working ports and the ASIS. This ensures advantageous ergonomics and proper instrument triangulation. At this stage, the relative laxity of the abdominal wall allows the ports to be gently translated superiorly with trocars in place, on block, to their final working position. At this stage, the case proceeds as normal. Even with Hyde's port placement, visualization and ergonomics remain excellent. The initial dissection is not impeded by the port placement. The deep pelvic portion of the ureteral reimplantation is essentially identical to a traditional approach. Note that we retain excellent freedom of movement of the instruments with the Hyde's port configuration. At the conclusion of the case, the instruments are withdrawn, allowing the ports to relax inferiorly along the line of fan and steel. The abdomen is then desufflated, and the port sites are closed at the level of the fascia and the skin. This image was taken in clinic three months postoperatively. Not only is there excellent cosmesis of the individual port sites, but the port sites themselves are well hidden, sitting below the belt line. The results in our initial series have been excellent. The Hyde's reimplant procedure has been performed on 18 patients with an average age of 8.3 years and has been successful in patients as young as 10 months old. We've encountered no complications with the procedure. In conclusion, we demonstrate that the Hyde's laparoendoscopic approach to robotic port placement can be easily adapted for pelvic surgery, including extravesical ureteral reimplantation and the technique poses little additional operative complexity. Postoperatively, patients benefit from all of the individual dividends of a minimally invasive approach with the addition of improved cosmesis of the laparoscopic port sites by hiding them below the belt line and in the umbilicus, an important advantage in this patient population.